Hello everyone, my name is Jaden Mao, and today sitting with me is the SGA president-elect, Adam Scheibe. How you doing, sir? Not too bad, how are you? Good. So, obviously you stated in the um, president-vice president debate that from your first day in office, which will be next fall, for clarification, uh, I would like to establish a point of communication with everyone on campus, from the administration to the student organizations, and everybody that has a take in what the university has to offer. How exactly do you intend to build these relationships with you just being one person? No, that's definitely a good question because you know, there's a ton of people that are at play here. When you know, like you said, administration all the way down to student organizations, there's tons across the campus. So I think you know, initially, right now, I've been doing a, de I'd say a decent job of trying to just you know make the point of contact with um, you know, president of the foundation, different um, you know faculty senate president, other individuals that, you know, I will need to be in contact with coming in in the fall, um, just really getting it out there that, like, I will be in this role, I am your point of contact, let me know if I can help you. Um, and then obviously, you know, other student organizations are all doing their elections currently, so it's kind of at a, a gray area for us to understand of, you know, who is it exactly that we're going to be getting in contact with. But, you know, I think between, you know, myself, Kehlani, the individuals that we hire within the office, that we have enough of a contact within other offices on campus, especially with the Center for Student Involvement, that we can really, you know, work to see, you know, who is it that we need to get into contact with from the get-go so that going forward there's no issues. Um, I think, you know, from Kaylani's standpoint with her hand being in allocations, I think it'll be important for her to understand, uh, you know, the different organization presidents, their treasurers, who they'll be working with throughout the year so we can get that all established at the beginning and then just be able to rock from there. Now are you going to be waiting until the actual fall semester to make contact or will you take time over the summer as well? No, it, it will definitely be something that we're do doing over the summer just to get a little bit of a headway, right. um, understanding that, you know, like I said, starting out early is much better than starting out late or even on time. So, um, no, it'll be something that we're doing over the summer, so if you're a student organization, new president, look for an email. Sure. So one of the aspects of your joint platform that you had in the election was affordability, mm. which is obviously one of the main reasons Fort Hayes has grown so much in student enrollment. One of the goals under this aspect are continue to work to make open resource textbooks more common. How do you explain what open resource textbooks are and how they would benefit students in the lab, in the long term? Right. So, I mean, an open resource textbook is basically, as it states, it's a textbook that's created by different uh, you know, university professors, other individuals across the nation that are just going together to create these products that can be shared amongst students. Um, you know, some of them come at like an annual fee or something like that, but the majority of them do come at a free cost. Um, I know within one of my, one couple of my uh, general education courses that we were able to utilize that. Um, I think starting at a general education standpoint, really getting the understanding that this is something that we can use um, can we apply it within more classes beyond this? That's something down the road. But I think from the get-go, something that Kehlani and I have really talked about is just get in contact with you know, the general education committee, general education course instructors, and see, you know, is this an alternative that you guys can consider at least for one year to see if it's something that'll benefit? Mm -hmm. And if it isn't in the long run, it's just something that we'll have to look at and say it might not continually work. But there is the process of obviously going through and testing it first before we can actually roll it out for the entire campus. And I assume you would want this to be tested in probably a few classes. Mm -hmm. Yes, because I mean obviously you know you look at some of the classical courses that you know you can't move away from a textbook or the classic literature book that has been taught since it was created. Um, so those we understand probably not going to be as applicable. Other ones probably a little bit more and I guess just being as open as possible to uh, researching and looking into the different options is something that we're just going to try to get across to each of the individuals. Now obviously you wouldn't be able to probably get into a cross campus, so would this be something you would push that the next administration would probably continue? It would. I mean I think you know from the beginning of the fall we we're going to try to look at you know how can we pilot it from a standpoint of you know review it in the spring or even pilot it into the spring and see once the next administration comes in if it's something that they're able to continue to build off of. Um, it's something that, you know, as costs continue to grow, we're going to have to look at as like this is an area that we can cut. So how in the long run can we get that to be lessened? Okay. 
Of course, knowing your constituency is obviously important to not only understand what they need or want, but also how to engage them in projects, plans, voting, etc. How well do you believe you know and understand the voting student body? I think given my experience within different organizations and different activities throughout my past four years, I've been able to get a very good understanding of what our student population looks like. Um, you know, from student orientation um, every spring with then the new students coming in in the fall, been able to see, you know, who is the next face of our university. From there, I've been able to see those individuals continue on and grow within their own student organizations. And within those connections, then I can get a better, well-rounded picture. I mean, obviously, like I'll always say, is that this isn't a one-man show. It's not something that I can continually do by myself. It's something that the team around me is going to be able to really assist me in providing the best option and the best picture for our students. Um, and I think being able to take that to you know, our administration, to the state level, and just being able to really get it out there that this is what our student population looks like and this is what they expect is what is my role. Okay. So the position, your position, the SGA president, has veto powers in terms of legislation passed by the Senate. What conduct or criteria will you utilize to determine whether you will veto a piece of legislation or not? You know, I think from a legislative perspective, I'm going to put full trust in Kehlani uh, with looking at the Senate and being able to know that all the operations are being operated at the level that they should. I mean, obviously, I'll have a level of oversight, but it's not something that I'm going to want to even have my hand in too much. Um, if it comes to a point that I see something that, you know, historically we've seen has not been beneficial or it should be taken in a different way, it may be exercised. But at this standpoint, I'm not even going to consider how one piece of legislation could um, be impacted if I would veto it or anything like that. Because, you know, like I said, I want to put full trust in them that knowing that they will make the proper decisions for our student body is what is important. Have you ever been part of the Senate when a SGA president has vetoed a piece of I have not. Okay. okay. So it's not historically... It has not historically been something that has been exercised. Okay. Is that something that is more of, you know, probably too much trust from the executive to the legislative branch? From a standpoint of, you know, historical, like you're saying, I think it's more just taking that precedent of there is trust there, but there is an understanding that we historically have made the right decisions and that as we continue that down the road, it'll just continue that way. Okay. So from the perspective of a seasoned member of SGA, because you've been part of SGA most of your career here, mm -hmm. as well as a longtime member of the FHSU and local Hayes family, does it concern you that there was only one official ticket this past election, as well as no senators voted into the College of Education? From the standpoint of you know ticket um, battle, you know it was something that you know Kalani and I had discussed that we're like this is uncontested. How are we going to pursue it? I know that Kalani and I, from the get go, we had full intensity going into it, and once we had learned of that, we were like we're still going to continue on this path. I think it was that energy behind what we had discussed and what we had decided to be as our road to now. Um, is something that we're gonna to try to replicate going forward. I think that um, right now on campus, there's a level of involvement by our students that we wanna to try to increase and maybe put it into areas that fit everybody's skill sets a little bit better, that then they're able to learn a little bit more and then bring it to the Student Senate going forward. Obviously within the College of Education, it's something that, uh, you know, last year I think that we had one seat that was represented um, so, you know, looking at maybe what, what, what are the issues there? Like, what do we need to discuss with the students that are in the College of Education? What can we do to better that? And what can we offer up to them as being a voice of all the students? Would it be perhaps if someone outside the university came in and threw a suggestion, say like, is there a lack of leaders per se here on campus? How would you respond to that? I think that Currently, there, isn't a lack, there is not a lack of leadership. There's a lack of people condensing where they put their leadership. I feel that some students may put their leadership skills on too many areas, and it's great because it obviously shows that we have great leadership and that they're able to pass it on to every area that they're involved. But from that standpoint, I think that you know 
some students may not look at those positions and believe, oh, I have the ability to do that, or they don't have the full knowledge of what's behind it or what's expected, so that some of those students that are a little bit, a little bit less involved don't attempt to go out them, so those other really strong leaders that are very involved can't then pass off to something like student government or representing the entire student population. Do you think there might just be a lack of interest in the SGA from the College of Education standpoint, or just most of the students in general? It's, I think it's more of an, a misunderstanding of what we do fully. Um, you know, f from an outside perspective, I can understand where students just think that all we do is handle money. Because for the most part, throughout a given year, our biggest population at any of our meetings is our second reading the allocations bill. There could be an understanding that you have to have some financial knowledge behind you to get into something like this. I think it's just going to be within our administration that really looks at, you know, how do we get our word out to the students and try to get some feedback as to what they want from us so that we can go forward to continue to get that interest into us to then fill all those seats. All right, well, thank you for sitting down with us today. Yes, no, thank you. If you, like, if you would like to learn more about Mr. Adam Scheibe or the SGA, please visit our website, check out our YouTube channel, and our social media. Thank you, guys.